Welcome to our series, Muslim Heroes of the Past. Today we're looking at Ali. He is the fourth Caliph of Islam and the cousin of the Prophet Muhammad. Dr. Shabir, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. Pleasure to be on. Let's talk about Ali. He was a young boy. He became a Muslim in his youth. Um, and at a very early time when the Prophet Muhammad really needed supporters, Ali was someone who came forward and with his bravery and strength, he just said, I'm going to become a Muslim. Yeah, he was only about 10 years old when the Prophet, peace be upon him, started receiving his message. And uh, when the Prophet, peace be upon him, gathered his uh, close relatives and prepared a meal for them, tried to give them the message, uh, you know, they got up and left before he could speak. <laughs> then he tried again and... Um, you know, eventually the, uh, the Prophet, peace be upon him, gave them the message, but uh, they started to offer words of denial and refusal. Uh, but uh, Ali, uh, young as he was, uh, stood up and said that he will support the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And he expressed his uh, belief in the mission. I believe he was the only one at that time who did that. Uh, within that, within circle, that, that yes. circle of family uh, relatives of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And of course, we know that uh, there, there are reports of Abu Bakr, uh, had embraced Islam. We spoke about Khadija uh, having embraced the message of uh, Islam as well. And uh, Zayed uh, uh, bin al-Harith uh, was within the household of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as a servant. Uh, and eventually the Prophet, peace be upon him, had adopted him. Uh, so he, uh, he also had expressed uh, belief in the message of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So Ali, was, as a young boy, was uh, a first in that uh, among the, the, the young people and within his family setting, he was the first to uh, embrace the message. Mm -hmm. Earlier in this series, Dr. Shibir, we talked about how the Prophet Muhammad and Abu Bakr escaped from uh, Mecca to, and uh, you know on the way to Medina and uh, how he left Ali in his place because there were people plotting to kill him. And uh, if they had noticed him, him leaving, they would have tried to kill him then. So he left Ali because he had some accounts to clear up with people, right? He was say, he, Prophet Muhammad used to keep people's money, right? So he left Ali so that Ali could return people's money to them um, before, he, before, you know, departing officially. Uh, so that's an interesting story because Ali must have been very frightened, but he showed bravery in that. Yes, in fact, he was known for his uh, for his bravery, and perhaps that is why the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, chose him for the for the <laughs> task. Obviously, you need a brave person uh, to uh, be there rather than somebody who would be jittery and uh, would give the whole plot away. But yes, uh, Ali was uh, willing to face that danger for the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and in a way, it foreshadows the idea that uh, later on became prevalent in. Uh, uh, among Shi'is in particular, that, uh, you know, uh, Ali, in a, in a way, stands in the place, or in this case, lies in the place of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Uh, there are other re reports and occasions when uh, it is uh, clear that the Prophet, peace be upon him, designated Ali uh, to be in his stead. Uh, a, and uh, uh, when in the last uh, pilgrimage, for example, uh, the uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, sent Ali and Abu Bakr uh, to lead the pilgrimage. Uh, Abu Bakr was to lead the, the rites, but uh, Ali was to make the proclamation uh, on behalf of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Now, uh, this was a, a, a situation in which uh, tribes mattered. Uh, you know, it mattered which family you came from, who was linked to whom uh, by blood relationship. Uh, so the, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, by designating Ali to uh, give the message in his stead, uh, was uh, you know, catering to this need of the people to hear it from either the man himself or from the man's nearest of kin. And, and that would have been Ali in that context. So Ali was designated by the Prophet, peace be upon him, to read off uh, the opening verses of the ninth chapter of the Quran, uh, which uh, declares immunity, the, the Prophet's uh, uh, immunity from uh, any uh, blame uh, as to what will follow due to the persistent uh, attacks from, from the non-Muslims at that time uh, against the Muslims uh, and the fact that Muslims are now given permission uh, to retaliate and to come out uh, to defend themselves uh, in open uh, conflict. I know Ali was given many other responsibilities by the Prophet. For example, he went to Yemen to tell people about Islam. You know, he, he wrote the treaty of P, uh, uh, the peace treaty. He was a scribe of the Quran. Uh, he was a secretary of the Prophet. There are many things that he did. 
Um, but actually, when I read the story of Ali, it becomes apparent that there is a divide in the way that um, very early on people perceived of Ali, right? So there, that, that, that Sunni-Shiite split appears very prominent in depictions of Ali. So you'll get a very different depiction uh, in, in Sunni sources and in Shi'i sources. Can you speak a little bit about that? Of course, all of them say good things. You know, both Sunni and Shi'i sources say good things about Ali, but you know, it's the caliphate that kind of changes, changes things um, in the story. Yes, uh, the, the greatness of Ali is uh, emphasized, especially in Shi'i sources and, uh, and somewhat in, in the Sunni sources. Uh, of course, the Sunni sources make room for other great figures around the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, most notably the uh, first uh, three caliphs and especially the first two, Abu Bakr and Omar. And, and so uh, Ali has a shared glory in, in the Sunni sources, but nonetheless, he, he has a very prominent place and uh, he is much praised in Sunni sources as well. And so we find uh, the undeniable fact in our Sunni sources uh, that uh, Ali radiallahu an, we say radiallahu an, which means God ha has been pleased with him, mm -hmm. um, a as a way of honoring him, as we as we mention his name. Uh, so he was married to the daughter of, uh, daughter of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, that is Fatima, and uh, he gave. Uh, I mean, he fathered the uh, grandsons of the Prophet uh, Al Hassan and Al Hussein. Uh, who are beloved to all Muslims, Sunni and, uh, and Shi'i. Uh, and so there is much to be said in his favor also in, uh, in Sunni sources. But you are right, uh, the, the, uh, you know, the two sides of the divide came to view him slightly differently, uh, with uh, Shi'is taking him to be the first uh, imam uh, in a kind of a spiritual sense of leadership uh, uh, of imam, which means leader. Uh, whereas uh, the Sunnis take him to be the fourth caliph, which is uh, the fact of history of how the caliphate uh, was uh, handed on from one person to another. First Abu Bakr, then Omar, then Uthman, uh, then uh, Ali. Uh, so Ali is uh, revered by Sunnis as well as the fourth uh, caliph in the history of Islam. Mm -hmm. Dr. Shabir, how was Ali known as a caliph? What, you know, how did he do in his position? And what happened to him? How long did he last in this role? Uh, Ali um, um, ruled for six years, and uh, these were years of turmoil. Um, after the death of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, um, already there were rifts within the community. Abu Bakr had to do his best to stabilize uh, the community. Uh, during the next uh, 10 years or so, uh, Omar ruled, and uh, he... Um, you know, sent out his uh, troops to um, stabilize a wider uh, section of uh, the Arabian Peninsula at the time and even expanding beyond that. Uh, but there already were, were um, schisms within the community and those uh, schisms uh, became uh, more manifest during the time of Uthman. Uh, and in his time, uh, it reached such a peak that uh, uh, Uthman was murdered by mm -hmm. one such faction. Then in the time of Ali as well, he had to stabilize uh, the uh, situation by bringing the factions together, uh, by not uh, seeking to reprimand those who um, uh, unjustly murdered Uthman before him, uh, so as to rather keep the polity together rather than to seek justice, which uh, could have resulted in greater harm at the time, but others saw it differently and demanded justice. So Ali was in a difficult position uh, trying to uh, make, you know, a sense of both sides. On the one hand, trying to uh, emphasize the stability. On the other hand, dealing with those who were demanding justice. Uh, so many uh, revolted against him and, and he had a very difficult time during his caliphate trying to uh, bring, bring about peace. Thank you for sharing his story, Dr. Shabir. May God be pleased with him. Truly, may God be pleased with him. Assalamu alaikum. We have some exciting news to share with you. As you know, Let the Quran Speak has been on TV screens and social media for 22 years. We've been reaching people all around the world, spreading positivity and good, and helping people experience the beauty of Islam and the accomplishments of Muslims. We've been shooting in this very space for the past two decades. And now, with the help of Allah, we're about to get the keys to Muslim Media Hub. If you like what we're doing, you're going to love Muslim Media Hub even more. Because it's the next 
step up. Think new TV shows, podcasts, social media content, and film. It will have new talent, more youth, and a lot more space and resources to do what we love. Spread the message of Allah. Our Muslim Media Hub costs $2.4 million. And for that, we need to raise $300,000. Please give whatever you can. Every dollar counts. It's our collective responsibility to share the message of Islam with our fellow human beings. Please help establish Muslim Media Hub so we can do this. It's a sadaqa jariya, something that will continue to be of benefit to the Muslim community long after we are gone. Thank you, and may Allah bless you and your loved ones today and always. Assalamu alaikum.